I think the overall practice and feeling that I'm involved in this magical thing does keep me going. But it is tough sometimes, I have to admit. Dominic Welsh works through all weathers at his studio in Devon. He's perfected his craft as a stone sculptor over 30 years. Now I've um, made the decisions. This is a very large piece. It's about sort of three meters tall. So it's be one of the biggest sculptures I've uh, undertaken. And I'm going to put these plugs and feathers in and attempt to split this corner off. And of course, now I've made this decision and drilled these holes in, then there's no going back. So um, this form is um, well on the way to being the sculpture it's going to be. An almost mystical sound emanates from the stone during this process, which has been used over millennia. beautiful bluey grey limestone from Kilkenny in Ireland and Carrara marble are Dominic's materials of choice. Stones with a surface quality allowing his shapes to shine through. Checking for faults is also a priority. In my mind at the moment I'm looking at making a tall sort of slender quite sleek piece about this tall I probably won't be able to use the full height of the stone. Um, so about just over life size, which for me is a really nice size to work on. That being okay, I will probably then just get the charcoal out and, and play around uh, uh, and invent and create. Extraordinarily, Dominic doesn't plan his designs. They flow from him as he works. Inspired by the natural world, the shape of the stone, and his own life experiences, all these factors play a part. I used to work uh, with a sculptor in a very sort of controlled workshop environment where he made maquettes and then I would scale the maquettes up and make a replica of what he had created. Whereas I've almost done completely the opposite, even though I'm in control of the whole, whole process. Um, I'm also just letting the process run and seeing where it takes me. I, I, I feel much more contented in my practice doing it that way. I will just start taking off the rougher parts of the stone and just start refining the form. I'm working on, on, on an idea of putting some sort of very simple concentric relief lines in this space here. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. The kit he uses helps protect him from the noise and dust involved in his work. It's a physically demanding job and also isolated. Today though, David Messam is visiting. He wants to plan progress for a big show at his London gallery in Cork Street. David, how are you? Tom! Good to see you. <laughs> Great. Made it at last. <laughs> Great, go. oh I say. Coffee with a smile. This is marvellous. You've got a wonderful day for it, too. Well, come in now, the goodness me, you've certainly been hard at it. Sort of breathe life into these lumps mm. of very solid stone. Well, they, uh, they do take quite a lot out of me. <laughs> well, I think you probably, probably find it's gone in there somewhere. The finished product is always so like perfect. The around here, it's a little stage. Yeah, beyond, it's, uh, I see, yeah. Yeah. I always marvel uh, at this stage and where 
five or six uh, months away from an exhibition. Um, and I'm here really just to see and chat with Dom and share some of the, the pain, if you like, actually, of, of, of what goes into making something for an exhibition against the deadline and so on. The sort of precision of the work, one might imagine, is uh, done with a hard line, but not a bit of it. It's all done by eye, by feel. He knows how far he can take the stone, what can come out of it, and this sort of thing. So this is a time when one, one, all those decisions are welling in his mind as to which way to go. Um, and the offcuts, even for some of the pieces that a hair might turn into a, you know, if they just you know, speak to him as they might, uh, into some, something at an exciting shape. When you finish with these things, uh, what you embody the stone with is just has, 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 gives off, it effervesces with, uh, with feeling. I do think my work is grounded, but that might be more to be, you know, to do with me being grounded as a person rather than, than, than the shapes I make being grounded. But, you know, the stone is heavy, it's got a weight, so it sits well. I do a lot of discs, but sometimes, the, you know, there'll be concentric rings within the disc. This is a more geometric design, so I'm playing around with patterns, so that's quite unusual. It's just a sort of meditation on the stone and a way of just sort of thinking and sort of drawing myself and the viewer in. For Dominic, the priority is getting the most out of his material right until the deadline for the exhibition. It's a process of evolution over the years. So, uh, you know, I tend to just come in, draw, doodle roughly on the stone and just start. And, and, and uh, I, I've, over the years I did a whole series of angel fish sculptures and the first piece was a shard of stone leaning up in the corner and it suggested that shape. So I made, you know, that into a small sculpture and then over the years I've sort of developed that shape and moved on and it's the same with the teardrop shapes I and mean, it seems to be a recurrent theme it's just the way it, it sort of lends itself to the weight of the stone but also having the uplift so it's a sort of mixture of being grounded but also being uplifting. I've been doing this for a long time now and I feel completely confident when faced with a big block of stone you know, I have students come in here and work with me and, and, and they can be completely overwhelmed sometimes of just being able to pick up a tool and make the tiniest mark in the stone. So to be able to know that you can go through every process from unloading it in through the side of the workshop to splitting it off, um, to grinding, to bush hammering, to all these processes and finer and finer and finer and, and, and then to be able to stand back and say, I've made that. I've done that, that's very special.